Thank you very much for being here. So we will try and work on this topic, which is quite new. We have been talking a lot yesterday about individual rights, and today we are going to be talking about the collective rights. I don't know whether you know Greek mythology, mytholo mythology because it's actually all around the god of medicine, but we also had this god of hygiene and uh, the god of uh, life as well. So we had the three of them. And right now I would like to ask you this question, and I'm looking at my Minister of Health. Well, please do not do any theory they will tell me. I wanted to, they wanted me to do something very practical. How can Athena come to the actual debate with the sanitary democracy right next to the Greek mythology? How can we make Athena come into it? So for that, I would like to ask you a very tangible question. How do you do in each institution, how do you do make sure that everything works and that for that, I would like to start with Veronique. You have like two minutes. Well, I don't really know whether I will be able to answer you the question related to Athena about mythology, but how can we make participate the users? This is a very important topic, that's for sure. I have had some experience in different establishments that I was managing. I believe that beyond all the structures that are existing as the commission of the users that is working for all the claims, uh, the goal that we should have is to make sure that the users will be participating in all the policies of different institutions and in the functioning of the establishments. And in Rennes, for that, we decided to create a new structure, will be called the Mixed Committee of Professional Users that allows us to associate users, but also with professionals and to make them participate in all the different policies that concern the users of the university hospitals. And we also have this important working committees concerning everything that is about hospitalization, but also concerning the disabled people and topics also talking about the preparation of the certification for the universities, hospital, university hospitals and so on. And in September 2021, we actually wanted to do it, but it was a COVID crisis. And also we have all the other projects for the university hospitals. So every time when we have a project that comes here at ANIS Kiel, we're trying to make participate all the users. So basically it's all the governance that we have here through all of the projects. We're trying to make sure that the users are participating. We're doing it at the level of the global governance as well, and we did it as much as the law allows us, but also make them participate all over the pilot structure, meaning the steering committee, but also everything that uh, is related to protocols and review of different protocols, and uh, the protocols related to the therapeutics, but also research-related protocols. So I believe that the association of the users should be a reflex for us, should also be a culture, the culture that will be a general culture for every functioning, for every establishment at, at every level of uh, the establishment, at the level of the governance of the hospital universities and so on, but also at every single other level. What would you like to say, Gérard Raymond? Well, I actually loved this word culture because we have been working in five different countries in Europe, and this was Sweden, Nor Norway, Denmark, and two other countries, and especially in Sweden, we had this notion that was basically considered upstream, and in Denmark it was the same thing, meaning every single year they would define indicators that would be here for that aim, and these indicators will be transparent, let's say, for the hospitals that we have in Stockholm, we have 80 to 90 indicators, indicators related to the participation of different users. Let's say we have some indicators around diabetes and so on, and they're very precise. So for France, we are talking about this culture and the association. So this is a sum of co-construction. And whenever we have launched our institutes of cancerology in 2013, it actually impl 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 uh, also made participate 17 different participants. And I was there at the very first meeting when we were talking about this nurse in cancerology who gave her cell phone number to the most fragile people and it was actually also affecting the time the waiting time at the emergencies but also we had this digital team we had eight, we have eight people who are working on all the digital solutions when we created the vaccination center with 500,000 patients in Stockholm in just 15 days and they were here together with the IT people saying that this is not really clear I have to put my mm, social security information and so on here 
together. So we were also working with different people. So recently we have been 90 managers united in Oslo and we were working on the whole healthcare journey and what we would like to improve here because we had some patients with us. Well, of course, it was not a very big participation. Nevertheless, they were able to share with us their experiences. And while listening to it, they were also able to state their opinion about the solutions that we were suggesting. Because sometimes the nurse was able to say, well, yes, we're going back to the human dignity and so on. So they were able to have this exchange, basically. So this is the culture that is pretty much going into all of this, to co-build with the patients. What well, would you like to add? Well, actually, what's important to say here is to look at the concrete results, because we are doing it all through the elected officials. So we have this social security, which is mandatory in France, but also we have this social democracy that is the base for all this. And we have the elections every single, every five years at the territorial level, but also at the level of the canton. And starting from this expression of our governance, the needs of the population are expressed. And later, there are they are transformed into action in a very concrete way. So we are participating in all of the conventional in, uh, instances and institutions in uh, the insurances, mandatory and uh, supplementary insurance. We are doing it through all of the territorial expressions and institutions. And also, very concretely, we are participating in the offer of the service that is provided in the territories. So we are a social protection body, but also we are uh, effectively participating. So from this point of view, in order to satisfy the needs of people in rural areas, we also have some interventions that are organized through associations, through the associative mechanisms that will be here in order to, let's say, help uh, at home for elderly people who are still autonomous. We also have this approach that also expresses needs of our population that we have organized. We have uh, created this tele-assistance, which is called Présence Verte, Green Presence, which is the very first in France. And it, once again, is the agricultural creation, the creation that represents the agricultural world, I would say, because this is a need that has been expressed. And it actually is here to support people in different situations. So we are here within the system of health, but also we are focusing on the well-being. So starting from the elected officials, elected representatives, Representatives. We have asked them to create uh, small nurseries in rural areas in order to re uh, satisfy very special needs. So we have been participating in all the problematics of the agricultural sector, and we have uh, created this uh, what is called airy ecoute, listening, uh, the listening device. And this, uh, these are psychologists that are available 24 hours a day, seven, seven days a week, and they're here to uh, satisfy the needs of. Uh, people in terms of psychological uh, advice. So this is also something that reflects specific needs of our population and devices that have been created in order to satisfy them. This is done for the users by our elected officials because they are at the governance and they have to carry out all of this project, the projects that we're creating with administrative services, so that it will be at the service of all the rural population because rural code is not very well known, but it actually asks us to intervene for all of the population in rural areas, which is why we have very concrete actions that allow us to express all of this throughout this representation that is pretty much a historical representation, I would say. Well, we are not going back to the Greek antiquity and so on. Nevertheless, we are talking about modern, modern times and all the tools that we have that are adapted to our situation and the origins of the social protection of what it is in its commitment in this common denominator which is the protection of the agricultural workers and our elected officials and as well as the voluntary workers are all working here and we have this model markdown that allows us also to have the prices that correspond to the economical situation here. So concretely, whenever we are talking about the patients, how can we make sure that the debates move forward? Well, for me, I actually loved the Swedish model. So today, I'm the representative of the National Union of the Associations that are certified by the Health Union. Union. So all the users of uh, the health care, well, right now my union has approximately 100 associations that are the associations of the patients, but also we have some elderly people, consumers, families, people with disabilities, and so on and so forth. So we can see that today we are talking about concretization of 
of uh, this law of uh, March 4, uh, 2020. Uh, um, uh, 2002, uh, and this is the collective law in order to try and discover our patients. We have discovered them at the end of the 20th century, and throughout the law of 2016, it has been created throughout the essential missions. So the first mission is basically to train all the users for uh, so that they would understand all the establishments, health healthcare establishments, but also to look at all the texts that we have, legal texts and regular texts that are part of our health care system. So this is good because in France, this union, France Asso Santé, is always a representative of the democracy in the field of health care, uh, in the sense that this is something that is perpetually evolving and today it has to go from representation to the participation with the real culture of participation, of dialogue, of confrontation, and this will be something that will be created with all of the stakeholders, not just health professionals, but also institutions, also users and some others. So this is what we can see today, because we want for it to be even more representative, even more active, and talk about other things than just conflicts and difficulties that patients can find in different healthcare establishments. Today we have many other topics in the, within the healthcare system. We have uh, the primary care and access to the primary care and many other topics that are today part of the consultation that we would like to have together with all of uh, the uh, managers and all of the institutions, and yes, indeed, sometimes it's more complicated than what we could wish for, but it's important to be consulted, but this is not really a result of a true participation and a true listening. Yes, indeed, this is a very interesting topic, so you will be able to ask the questions later on, so please prepare to prepare to have this question. But uh, about this reform, Juppé, we were saying that the state and the insurance are the actors of the organization of the healthcare. Then Mr. Kushner said that the users have to be here, and then now the insurances are saying, yeah, we also have a role to play. And now Mr. Dejder is very sensitive to what I am about to say. We are talking about elected officials and territorial administration. So we spent, we went from Dialogue 1 to Dialogue 2, Dialogue 3, Dialogue 4, and Dialogue 5. And just as we have said yesterday, Isabel de Savoie said it already, we have also these structures, all the structures that are very important. But you, how do you see this transition between Dialogue 2 and Dialogue 5? Because I love this. This, uh, uh, this formula by Pascal, whatever is unity is tyr tyranny and whatever is uh, plurality is disorder. So how can we conjugate these two notions? And of course, we will have uh, this discussion about CNR uh, as well. Yes, well, what I would like to say is that everyone and every single stakeholder should be also participating in all of this process. But if we are talking about the access of the participation of the elected officials and their role, well, of course, they have a very important role. They they already have it, and they have an even more important role. They are participating in all of the organization of health care and all the public policies. We can see it at the level of different establishments of health and so on. The mayors are already here, but they already have a certain advantage because they're representing the population and they're expressing the opinion of the population. So they can talk about different challenges and so on, challenges related to the society. And very often, they really bring forth this law. Sometimes there's no solution here, and sometimes they are also talking about the territories that are quite desertified. But they can also constitute an important obstacle to the transformation of a territory. We can see it in some examples, because sometimes in terms of surgery, we can see people that don't have enough competencies in order to provide the needed care. So uh, quality and proximity is an important debate, and sometimes proximity should, be, should prevail on the quality for reasons that are understandable, but we actually have to accompany the transition of the system of health care and the collaboration between different hospitals because it can also play an important role. And in this field, and thank you very much for the examples that you have given for us for Denmark and for Sweden, the elected officials, when they have a role, today they have a role in France because, uh, yes, indeed, they uh, 
they are the hospitals are presided by mayors. So I believe, and this is a question that I'm asking because I don't have an answer to this, but probably this is something that will feed your discussions. So for the collective, the territorial collective administration, uh, how can they act on quality? It's very complicated in France because yes, indeed we have a very Jacobin and very centralized system, but probably this is one of the possible pathways for the evolution of the system because we can see that in the Nordic country, it actually allowed to have a very important organization at the level of each commune, each department, each region, uh, and that's what we see in Sweden and in Denmark. So we see also in France that the reorganization and restructuration is very important here with respect to the offer and not just with respect of the political stakes and challenges, but especially taking into account quality and particular approach. So this is why I believe that the healthcare actors have a major role to play in order to work with the elected officials around questions related to health and to understand that quality and proximity, these are not always two parameters that go together in the current situation. Yeah, well, I wanted to, uh, to talk about the public hospitals. Is this true? Would you? What would you like to say Well, about this? Just, go, just to go back to your question, I would like to say that there is no perfect system, but I'm working every single week in Sweden. And we're talking about the field, the territory. We're talking about trust and contractualization. Then we're talking about the pilots, and then we're measuring all of this. Having elected officials who will be very, very participating and committed, it, will, it is very good. Nevertheless, there needs to be a, an accountability, because the Swedish system has 13 regions that are very much decentralized. So elected officials are very much participating. Nevertheless, they are accountable on the training of the nurses, on the indicators around the health care. We have to communicate here. We have 110 million of people who are a part of our services. So as all the colleagues everywhere, we have to do the reports every single trimester for all the Swedish administration on all the indicators. And the Minister of Health of the region has to do this report in front of all the colleagues. So we are basically paid per quality much more than in France. And in France, this is a very important fight because we believe that this is a very healthy system. So the whole system basically here is different. Well, there is no perfect system once again, but the system in itself that I'm talking about is very different from the French system. So the question for the uh, representative of the MSA. Ah, so what can you say for the elected officials? Well, I can say for the 13,000 elected officials, we also have the elected officials who are part of the territorial collectivities. So the dialogue that we can have here is very natural. So this is probably very simple because uh, we have uh, this habit of working together Together, of working together quite concretely because all the MSA uh, offices are part of the network that is quite bro quite widespread and this is a very mutualistic uh, mutualistic organizations. So they are all the centers of resources for the public account uh, between the territorial collectivities and the state. And we have a very concrete project engineering in each territory. So quite naturally, the dialogue with political representatives and elected officials is done at the level of the territories, but also at the national level, because our elected territorial officials, uh, despite their mandates, are very often have national interfaces who are quite useful and also very interesting in order to carry out messages that are with relationship to the rural areas and for questions that are specific health-related questions for the rural territory. So we always have this permanent dialogue with the national representation, between national representation and territorial representation in the departmental council, in the regional council in the municipal council as well. So this is something I believe that is perfectly integrated into our DNA. The social democracy and MSA is one of the historical representation of this, and that's a very lively uh, representation of it. And this is actually what we state. And the policy, in my sense of this term, basically goes back to the very center of the village. So for you, what would you like to say about the representation? So how to come from the representation to the con con construction by avoiding uh, the uh, accountancy and so on? Well, just a couple of examples for the consultation. Uh, I would say that today we have all uh, voted for the PFSSL. But uh, last week we have also seen that we have had this video conference and this consulting session for one full hour. 
power. And we have looked at the articles quite quickly, and the associations have been consulted as well. Uh, so everything went quite well, and so on. So this is the vertical, uh, vertical consultation. Yes, exactly, about the text of the law. But on the other hand, we also have some other examples that very few people know about, and I would like to take advantage of this occasion in order to talk about this. The very first lockdown, everyone left, everyone was locked at his or her home because health is very important for each and every one of us. But we still had to continue acting well, of course. Without media, without all of this, we basically started contacting each other every single day with the director of the health insurance, Nicolas Revel, and the minister of health back then, who was Olivier Véran. And every single day we had phone meetings in order to talk about the situation and about the decisions that we can take. So without advertisement or anything, all the decisions that have been taken at the social level in order to protect all of the citizens were taken with the agreement, and sometimes because we asked it, of France Asso Santé. So, of course, the uh, democracy of the health exploded because we didn't use any magazines, we didn't use BFM or TV, but nevertheless, we continued working. Yeah, so you were lucky here. Well, from time to time, Guy wants to invite me, and this is very good. But otherwise, no one remembers this. But we had a platform that was called Stop COVID, and no one wanted this platform. So, in our dialogues, with health insurance, but also with the Department of uh, the Digital Health. We con contacted each other and we have been working. And in three weeks, with all the associations of France Asso Santé, we have created anti-COVID. And you can see that the result is right here. So I believe that there are two ways today and tomorrow to make participate the citizens, because the users, uh, beyond the users and the patients, we're talking about the citizens, the citizens at the level of each and every day. Territory. And we will see what the minister will be presenting to us Monday in uh, uh, this session related to health. How can we make sure that the citizens participate, concretely participate at the level of the territory? And how can we today satisfy the expectations and the needs of the population? And tomorrow, uh, we'll actually look at all the reaction that will come. But indeed, it's important to make sure that all the actors are participating in this discussion and the main actor is, of course, the citizen. Yes, indeed. We are talking about the COVID crisis, and it actually reminds me of all the different initiatives that has been shared between the political elected representatives, basic political representatives, meaning the mayors, and our elected officials. We had 300 actions that have been created that were called MSA, Solidarity. So meaning, meaning that the elected, elected representatives went to see the citizens who were isolated in the rural areas. So we actually had this partnership with the the Association of the Rural Mayors in France in order to create this type of action. Well, this is one of the examples of the actions that we have undertaken naturally in our organization. And I believe that this is a very good testimonial of this porosity between the political elected representatives and smaller political uh, smaller elected representatives and the territorial community. Well, I, uh, you're all talking about the democracy and the way of the patient of participating, but how can we avoid going back to this discussion course that will be autocratic. Well, Sophie Gricol loves this expression. And because the democracy means that the citizens will be informed, and we will come to the third question later on. So how can we improve democracy by making participate them in an informed way? Because that's the condition. Well, uh, it's not because they are elected representatives that they're stupid. Well, how can we train them? How can we educate them? So how can we do this? I just would like to take an example that we have mentioned just before with Girard in a very concrete way, and our colleagues are doing the same. If I take approximately 950 patients, diabetic patients that we have in Stockholm. So these are the patients that are validated by the social security, local social security, and they're defined by the very transparent indicators that we have every single year. So we can see the percentage of uh, the uh, of, of the blood sugar in these patients going down. We can see 96 uh, percent uh, and so on. We can see basically all the indicators and the evolution of these indicators year after year for all of these patients. And we see the patients that have 
have diabetes type 1 and other types of diabetes. So basically, this is something that is a proof of transparency, and our colleagues are doing exactly the same thing. And with respect to all of these indicators, we have exactly the same rights, and we are paid with uh, based on the quality of the, of the performance that is provided by these indicators. Well, I believe that we're talking about users, but also we can talk about the sick, but it's important to inform all of these people. So the question that I would like to ask you, how the new technologies have helped you or not to try and train and educate these people, because we have this impression that we are working with those who are very little educated. So we will say, I would like to work with this, but in my house I will be like, how can we do to explain how to work with this, with this tablet, uh, to uh, villager from a very uh, far away rural area in order to have them access this information. Well, I believe that it, it can basically work. So meaning that we still have 3G and 4G even in the remotest areas. So does technology help? And how can we make sure that the technology will be even more accessible to all the people, not just to those who are initiated? Well, I believe that technology is basically a very important challenge today because all the tools that we have for telemedicine, telesurveillance, tele-expertise and so on, all the connected devices and so on, all of this will become a better, better and bigger element in order to improve the access to different territories, but also they will have uh, they will affect the quality of healthcare. We have seen that during the COVID crisis, we could see all the cases, COVID cases, and uh, death because of COVID. They were pretty much concentrated in the most unfavorable areas, in the areas where uh, where the situation is the most difficult. So the technology is definitely a very important progress. So we have uh, invested in the digital tools, in the telesurveillance, and so on. We have more and more people who are using telesurveillance. We also organize the expertise centers that will allow us to uh, care uh, about, uh, to care um, to take good care of people in different areas. We did this in Brest. We also developed teleconsultation with approximately 40 EPADs, and this was uh, throughout the COVID crisis and before the COVID crisis. This was very important for us to offer this competency to all the teams that were in difficulty, especially throughout the management of this crisis. So yes, indeed, the technological tools tools will be a major element and important leveraging elements for all of the healthcare system and we have to use them and we also have to continue this dynamism of teleconsultations that we have mentioned yesterday. We have seen yesterday during this round table the example of all of this. It's important to continue working on it with our population even if now is decreasing a little bit. We have to relaunch these dynamics because today a lot of activities show us that we will not have enough professionals in order to cover overall territory. So the digital tools are indeed very important in this process. So uh, also the green approach will be very important for some of the areas that are remote areas. So meaning that we have to go to someone and this approach go to someone, uh, go to someone who is in a rural area and very far away area is very important. So even for all of us who are around this table right now, we will understand that uh, an older person in the rural area is, go is going to be quite much harder for them. So we have to go and see them. So all the tools will be good, but also we have to accompany them for the digital gap to like fill this digital gap, because not all of them have the power to access all the digital tools. Yeah, we actually are very lucky because we have people who have the point of view of France, but also of some other countries. So in the northern model, were they able to find solutions? Well, I have three examples. One of them is Swedish-Danish, and the other one is Swedish-French. By listening to Veronique, I would like to say that in the continuity of all the uh, care and um, medicine, we have a lot of uh, digital tools, we have a lot of uh, startups as well, because we already know that approximately 30% of uh, patients will not take all the drugs that they have to take per day. And uh, we actually are working on this. Let's say if one person has to take a drug or something like that, if they have a small robot at home that will remind them that they have to take this uh, pill uh, at a certain time and so on, so that to avoid consequences. And the nurse will also call them in order to have a dialogue to say if the robot, if the robot informed them but they didn't take the drug, the, the nurse will be calling and say, you did not take your drug and 
so on and so forth. So basically, we need to have this flexibility here, and we are having it. In the region of Stockholm, that's another example, we are basically uh, working at 60% at night, and this is at the, at the request of the health minister, because uh, we had this problem for the nighttime hours and care provided at nighttime hours. So we have the team of 350 nurses who are going to people's people's home if there is a problem of the catheter or of insulin and so on. And all of this comes from the listening to the patients. And a lot of our colleagues in France, and it uh, doesn't matter what is the status, we have uh, launched a lot of different tools online, and we have 45% of people who are doing everything from home. We have 2 million of people practically every single year who are being listened, who are participating in uh, uh, forums and questions and so on, and they are saying, yeah, I like my drugs to be delivered to my home, and we have launched the service with a French startup to offer the service of drugs being delivered to people's home. So basically, we are listening once again to the patients, and we are going back to all the objectives, the 15 objectives of the uh, health system. So basically, we are much more uh, looking at the result, and we have the specific aim to be engaged, to be committed at the individual level, and to listen to the patients. Well, a very in simple question that I would like to ask you, MSA, what are your goals? Well, we actually have this strategy, strategy to support patients and to do this accompaniment, so to organize this system like a concierge service at the level of the healthcare system, and we would like for it to be very efficient. So I would like to say is that the tools are very good. Nevertheless, we need to have true people who will be talking to real people. So we have some elected officials who are being trained, who are basically the ambassadors on a certain territory, and they will be talking to people around them. They will be doing this training, and they're doing it together with our teams, so that's to carry out certain initiatives within the territory that are destined to all of the population. We also have developed apps that are specifically done in order to train our elected officials and to animate them. We have all of this, and this is uh, also disseminated throughout the cell phone. It actually allows them to have this continuous training, and this is done at the mutualistic level of the central, uh, central, central agency of MSA, and we also have a certain number of apps and newsletters that allow them to get regularly information, and this is something that we have developed especially during the COVID crisis because this is one of the very specific vectors of information. So throughout all of these tools, real people in the territory are contacting real people. They're doing it throughout their own initiative, so this is a very singular way. So they're doing it uh, in an individual way and a more collective way because they're doing uh, meetings, collective meetings, and they're also doing it throughout the Maison Française. Maison France Service, so this institution, Maison France Service, also is our partner, so they're installing the public service in every single territory. So they wanted to be an operator as well, which is why they are also carrying out a lot of uh, projects in uh, different institutions of the territory. So in, in this Maison France Service, they are also providing additional advice. What I also wanted to say is that we are present in the digital health space. We have this label, and right now we have this Memo Santé Enfant, Health for Children, like a memo for uh, health of children. And this is part of the 10 first applications that we have. So this is MySpace Health, and this is the creation by MSA. These are individualized, individualized prevention advice for each and every parent for their children. So it's a little bit like a medical file of a child, which is modernized and developed. And it also is extended to the preventive aspect. And for two years, approximately, we have also done all of this experimentation for the uh, region Centre Val de Loire, which was called Lisi. And we understand that in order to be like a concierge of uh, the healthcare system, we have to access population, but also allow the population to access to the prevention services that will be very personalized. So we did this test for two years, and we decided to deploy it a little bit differently right now, all of this uh, devices, I would like to say. So what would you would like to say, because when you listen to them, you would be like, everything is done already. We have nothing to do anymore. Yes, indeed, we can retire quietly. Well, what I could say is that today, digital should be very humanistic digital, and it can, it, it has to become a connection between all of the stakeholders. Well, of course, those who are very far away, they are far away. So we have to question us, how can we, uh, how can we make them participate as well, and to understand and to make understand our citizens what happens at the 
with all of these tools. We have some ambassadors, we have some initiatives. Either these initiatives are done by institutions or by others. I believe that the associative, the associative environment is also very important because they can mobilize their own, uh, their own communities in order to make sure that they will be participating and present in the healthcare space. The pharmaceutic professionals are also important actors here because we can some, somehow affect some of the citizens through them as well. But we have to basically look at all of the actors, and these tools should be available and used by all of the healthcare professionals, uh, the software for the jobs that will be interoperable, and it has to be in the healthcare space. So if you would like to move forward and to progress, we have to have a little bit more of these links, connections, participation in the healthcare system. We have to use the tools, and those who are today the professionals of healthcare and the actors of the healthcare system, they uh, have to start using all these types of methodology. So we can see that this redesign of the health system, for that we have some tools, we have some intentions. Nevertheless, we have to be all willing to do it to basically finally come to this. Well, before giving the floor to I, to someone else, I was looking at what you have written, that with the reform of uh, Kushner, we, uh, it was actually incomplete. But we, uh, are we still in this situation? Is it still incomplete, this reform? Or did we manage to complete it finally? Well, I see that we are starting to progress to the toward this completion. And I believe that we have to double our efforts here, because you were saying, how can we make people work together? Well, I actually believe in the collective intelligence, but then we have to act upon it. So it's not just the fact of bringing people around one table, then we will achieve results. So how can we learn to listen to one another? Because in this country, unfortunately, we don't do it a lot. How can we be nice, open, and respectuous toward one another? Well, this actually takes a lot of time, of course, but the results are much more interesting when we're doing a very good teamwork than when we succeed on our own. Because when we are on our own, yeah, well, we'll satisfy our ego, but but the teamwork is much more important. Well, within the same logic and from a very pragmatic point of view, coming from our position, which is as a mand uh, we are a mandatory health insurance, but also we are an actor at the, on the territory, very close. So we have two very concrete proposals. The first one is about the steering and the organization of the journey, the healthcare journey, because today you know that we have some assistance, health healthcare assistance that has been developed in the primary health care. We also have uh, the SAS, which is the access to the health care. And it, I believe that it will be very important for us to develop even more the assistance throughout this steering and piloting of uh, this journey, uh, to develop this assistance, this assistance and support at the patient or the future patient by all of this medical and health care professionals, by using SAS even more uh, in order to develop information fact, all of this even more. So we actually suggested to broaden the scope of all of this, to broaden it to the whole of the healthcare system. So that's the first proposal that we have. And the second proposal is that throughout the healthcare treatment, we know that we have a moment that is a privileged moment in order to think about prevention and in order to think about new project of life after a, healthcare, a health accident. I believe that this is pivotal, especially in terms of the reflection of the organization of all of this journey. And within CSS, are, we also have suggested to organize this type of service. Well, just to ask you this question, because you you can say you can say what you want. So, what are you expecting from the CLR in order to improve the organization by those who need all of this this redesign of the healthcare system? So, what are you all expecting? What are your expectations? So, probably you will say that you have a jogger here in this discussion, and probably we will be able to call upon you later. Well, I am expecting a lot from the CNR. I believe that this is the case basically for every one of us. This is also, uh, we have to make sure that there is a very strong will of uh, the public power in order to reform our system, because right now we see that it, it has exhausted itself, and all the health professionals, especially at the hospitals, are uh, very exhausted. But I believe that this will exist. And what I'm expecting is many things. First of all, this de 
debate about the attractiveness that will allow us to come up with measures that will be that will be uh, going beyond the Segur because the Segur uh, that we have today is really insufficient. Second, about the difficulty of work at night and exceptional work as well. I believe that this is something that is really affecting the attractiveness and we have to harmonize here in terms of uh, compensation and so on and just harmonize the compensation. Just one word that I wanted to say here. We have differences that are major and that are very important and uh, that are shocking that exist in France. So for me, well, just for the private sector, what would you like to say about this? Well, uh, for liberal doctors. We are basically expecting a lot from the announcement of the minister about the CNR. The first thing probably is to find back, uh, find again this COVID spirit, because we have this trend uh, if we compare to the other countries. Starting from the offer, we have to start from the demand and the needs of the territories. The uh, the um, provisions for diabetes, etc. We can take into account all of this data and start by the users, start by their needs and their uh, and uh, their rights and so on. So what can I can I say? Yes, of course. Let's move the rules, whatever it works in the territory. Yeah. Well, on Monday probably we will be needing all of this information. And yes, indeed. Then. We don't have any taboo topic here. At all of our meetings at the territorial level and so on, we are going here with this real will to be partners and to discuss all of the topics and to receive the comments. Well, we have said that it's very important for us. We have taken all the notes so that the Minister of Health will be aware of our debates. Thank you very much for your precious thoughts. Thank you.